everyone. My name is Lauren Compilio. I am the Associate Director of Career Advising at the Career Development Center. Thanks so much for joining this virtual workshop on creating strong resumes. For more information on resumes, I'll encourage you to either make an appointment with myself or another career advisor on Handshake or to reach out, out to us directly at careers at anselm.edu. Let's get started. So starting a little bit about what is a resume. So some of you might have done resumes in high school. Some of you might have a resume that you've started that outlines your experiences from that you've had at St. Anselm College so far. And some of you might be actually using your resume to apply for different internships and potentially positions at this point. But essentially, even though all of your resumes might look a little bit different, your resumes are essentially a short, one page typically type document that describes your education, experiences, accomplishments, and skills. A well-written resume relates your career goals to employer needs. Resumes and cover letters are oftentimes the first thing an employer sees when they're in the process of making a decision for an internship or a position. This is why creating these effective and strong documents are such an important part of the application process. So thinking a little bit about what to include on, in your own resume, um, we have a couple different sections here are some really important things to put on a resume, but I will start off with, by saying that your resume doesn't need to include necessarily all of these things, and what you include on your resume really depends on your experiences, academic background, and the types of position that you're applying for. That said, definitely feel free to bring your resume to either a virtual drop-in hour this semester or to make an appointment with a career advisor on a handshake. But typically, these are some really helpful things to include on your resume. The first piece being your education. As a college student, your education and degree should go at the very top of your resume. And you also want to put the degree that you're receiving. So Bachelor of Arts in whatever your major is. That's really important because it shows the degree that you're in the process of pursuing. Under this section, it's also important to put any minors you might have to show all of the different versatility you have in your academic background. Under your education section, this is also a really great opportunity to put any honors you might have. Perhaps you've made dean's lists, you've been granted academic scholarships, um, anything of that nature can be really helpful to include. Another section that's typically helpful for first or second year students, but depending on the types of positions you're applying for, can also be helpful for juniors or seniors, but it can be helpful to add a related coursework section. This is, these are showcases classes you've taken at St. Anselm College that provides an academic background to an industry or a job that you're interested in. If you don't necessarily have experience or extracurricular opportunities that directly relate to some of the positions that you're applying for, adding a related coursework section can be a really helpful way to showcase that you have the academic background and knowledge for some of these positions. As a typical rule of thumb, try to avoid any introduction level classes. For example, avoid having Psych 101, but perhaps putting an abnormal psych class or a personality psych class, something that shows a little bit more depth and specialization. It's also helpful under your related coursework section to note any large scale or semester projects that you've worked on, if you participated in service learning, anything along those lines that are experiential in nature can be really helpful ways to add to your resume. Something else to include on a resume could include any specialized skills. Um, this could include languages, advanced or specialized computer software knowledge, any skills, certifications, or trainings that you've acquired. When you're talking about languages, it's important to indicate the proficiency and the level of language that you have. For instance, conversational Spanish to give an employer or whomever's looking at your resume an opportunity to really gauge what your skills are. Some other skills to put 
if you have them, is Excel, different database knowledge in terms of computer platforms, if you're now familiar with Zoom, Canvas, anything along those lines. I think the world we're living in now has really encouraged us to become a lot more knowledgeable on different virtual platforms. That being said, if you've developed a better understanding of Zoom or some of these online platforms, that's a really great thing to put on your resume as well. Typically, we'll have students have a related experience section. These are jobs, internships, volunteer experiences, work study slash student employment positions that have some sort of relation to an internship or job that you're hoping to apply for. Even if it doesn't directly relate, if the skills that you've gained from these experiences are also helpful for some of the positions that you're applying for, it might be a great idea to put them on your related experience section. Another common section is leadership experience. This could include extracurricular activities, athletics, different clubs and organizations you might be involved with. Additionally, having an additional experience section, these are positions that don't fall under any other categories that you might have listed, but are also showcasing different skills you might have developed throughout the way. These are called transferable skills. These are skills that you might have developed in a position that don't relate to what you're necessarily applying for, but they're helpful skills that will be needed in jobs and internships across the board, such as effective communication skills. That's something that you might have developed and really strengthened in an unrelated experience but it's a helpful skill that you'll need in other positions that you might be applying for. Another optional um, category to have on your resume is a profile or summary statement. And in a few minutes, we'll talk a little bit more about what those are and how those could be helpful. So profile and summary statements. This is something that would typically go at the top of your resume and profile and summary statements apply, uh, provide employers slash internship supervisors with a brief summary of your skills, experiences, and goals as they relate to a position that you're applying for. Profile and summary statements are concise yet informative. Typically we recommend no more than one to two sentences. If you're choosing to use a profile or summary statement, it's important to customize the statement to each position that you're applying for. The reason for this is to ensure that you're highlighting the correct skills and experiences for the desired position. For example, if you were applying for a tutoring position, you'd really want to highlight skills and experiences that you've previously demonstrated that would be most helpful for that kind of role. And then finally, one question that we typically get are what's the difference between a profile or summary statement versus an objective? And a lot of students will put an objective on their resume because you might think that that's something that has to be incorporated. And the biggest difference is an objective tells an employer what you're looking for. So looking for a particular job. Whereas a profile or summary statement really shows what you bring to an organization. So it's really focused on skills that you've demonstrated and developed and characteristics about you that would make you a strong fit for the position that you're applying for. So we've talked a little bit about some things to include on a resume. Here are some things to be sure not to include on a resume. So typically, if you're deciding to include a GPA, we tend to avoid anything less than a 3.0, not because that's a poor GPA, but that's just the typical rule of thumb that we like to advise students in our office. You want to make sure that your resume is free from any grammatical errors or typos. Again, because this is one of the first documents an employer will see, you want to make sure it's professional and as polished as possible. Again, if you do choose to include an objective statement or you do want to have something like that there, we would encourage you to use either a summary or a profile statement to really showcase what you have to offer versus what you're looking for. 
any personal information unrelated to professional and education experiences. So what this means is you don't want to include a picture of yourself as part of your resume, anything personal about you that's not directly tied to your education or professional background, such as marital status or anything along those lines. Additionally, while sometimes people like to know particular hobbies that they have, your resume really should be focused on skills, experiences that really should showcase your professional sense. So I definitely like to discourage people from putting that on their resume. Additionally, you'll want all the space that you need. And so using that space wisely can really make for a strong document. Additionally, use avoiding any use of pronouns. So when you're talking about your experiences, avoid saying, I did this and I did that and gave these skills. You also want to avoid colorful prints and untraditional fonts. This is for a few reasons. You want to make sure that your application documents are as easily readable as possible. That being said, the fonts and colors that you might have on your computer might look different to an employer depending on the system, the Microsoft Office version they have. So you just want to err on the side of caution and be conservative when you're choosing these things. The worst thing in the world would be for you to have a fantastic resume filled with really great experiences and then to have an employer not be able to read them. That being said, it's always really important when you are saving your resume and cover letters to be sure to save your documents as a PDF. This is for a couple of reasons. A PDF freezes the formatting to ensure that how it looks on your computer is how it looks on somebody else's computer. Additionally, PDF is a universal tool. So whether or not you're using uh, Apple product and the employer is opening it up on a PC or vice versa, it will look the same on both ends. That being said, it's also very important to be conservative. So again, really being mindful of fonts and colors and not using them to ensure uh, the highest level of readability. You also want to avoid any abbreviations or acronyms unless you're abbreviating a state name. This is important because you never want to make the assumption that an employer knows what an acronym or what something stands for. So that's really helpful just to spell everything out if possible. A few tips for a strong resume. Again, being clear and concise with your descriptions. I like to recommend the verb plus skill plus example formula. So when you're thinking about describing your bullet points or paragraphs for your experiences, having each bullet point start with a verb, what you did, and have that verb describe a skill that you've gained and or strengthened, and then providing an example of how you did that. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you an example of a few bullet points on a resume so we can talk a little bit about how I've used the verb skill example formula to really integrate that into a strong document. You want to make sure that you're maintaining a consistent format. You also want to set your experiences in a reverse chronological order within section. So for instance, if you have a related experience section, a leadership section and an additional experience section, you want to make sure that all of the experiences within those sections are most recent working your way backwards. This is important because it allows the reader to see the development and how you've continued to grow and the variety of roles that you've held. It's also important to provide concrete outcomes of experiences with numerical information if possible. There's a big difference between saying coordinated 100 volunteers to organize food baskets and that rather saying coordinated volunteers to organize food, fam food baskets for families in New Hampshire. So really giving that information if applicable. The same goes for managing money. So perhaps you're a treasurer in a club and you're managing the class funds and dispersing funds as necessary. If you're able to provide how many, what the, the amount of funds you're managing, that's really helpful. Um, and anytime you can provide that concrete information, it just really adds to your experiences. 
And again, using keywords from the position descriptions to describe your experiences. So we recommend anytime you're applying for a position, it's helpful to have that job or internship description right next to you so you can actually see what they're looking for. And if you've demonstrated some of the skills that they're looking for in a position, definitely be sure you're including that same language if you've d demonstrated those skills to really make your document as strong as possible. A couple common mistakes for resumes are some formatting issues. We tend to avoid using Word or resume templates. The reason for that is templates can often limit space with suggested topics for your resume that you might not want to use. And oftentimes they ineffectively use space and can sometimes force the writer to exceed one page. Instead, we recommend that you can design your own document based on examples that can be found in Handshake um, using Word. Um, this allows you to have more control over your resume, and it also allows that when you're deciding to edit your resume and add to your experiences, because we all know resumes are ever-evolving documents, it makes that process a lot easier. Another common mistake is the use of space. So sometimes if you're having your resume, you're having a difficult time getting your resume to one page, a few quick tips you can do are to adjust your margins. We don't avoid having your margins be smaller than 0.5. And you can also adjust your font, um, typically no smaller than size 11. But these can be helpful ways to use your space and to, be in, and to ensure that you're using all of the white space on your resume in the best way possible. Another common mistake are just general inconsistencies. So ensuring that when writing your resume, everything is streamlined and orderly, all of your margins have to be the same size, and all of your titles and subtitles must be lined up and highlighted or emphasized in the same manner. So whatever you're doing in terms of if you're deciding to bold the organizations you've worked at, making sure you're doing that throughout. Whatever format you end up choosing, being consistent is really important because it just adds to that professional polished document. A few more common mistakes are omitting irrelevant old information. So being sure that your resume, as we've mentioned, is an ever-evolving document. So you're constantly adding new experiences, skills that you've developed to your document. And with that said, as you're adding, you're going to need to remove old information that's less relevant. So for juniors and seniors, in order to fit your experiences on one page, we recommend removing information from high school unless it's essential in order to create your document and to have it be as relevant as possible. Another mistake that we see are people downplaying their experiences. Many students don't believe their experiences are beneficial or do not know how to articulate the skills they've learned from a position to market themselves as a strong candidate. So what we really like to encourage you to think about what was needed to be the best person possible in your previous position. So for instance, if you have experience as being a cashier, you weren't just a cashier handling exchanges and transactions. You likely developed interpersonal and professional communication skills. You likely handled large sums of money. And really thinking about your experiences in a dynamic way to say, what did I need to do to be successful in this position? And what were some transferable skills that I gained and developed through this position that might be helpful in other positions I might want to apply for? So previously I chatted a little bit about looking at an example, particularly as it relates to writing the verb plus skill plus example formula. So thinking about some of these experiences, all of these experiences here start with a strong verb that talk about not only what Lucia did, but skills that she's developed along the way. So demonstrated attention to detail by assisting the assistant director of HR benefits and wellness with planning and implementation of the annual wellness week and benefit fair. So it's saying what she did, but it's also incorporating the skills that were needed to do that successfully. And if you're having a hard time coming up with the skills, if you really think about your experience and sit and think to yourself, what was needed or what did I have to do to ensure that I did this as best as possible, that can be a really helpful way to, to really navigate those skills. 
And then again, some of these additional experiences and sections like we talked about. One thing to note is ensuring that all of the dates and the locations are all lining up if you're choosing to align them to the right side. Again, with the consistent formatting, so in this example, all of the organizations are bolded and all of the positions are italicized, so being sure that you're keeping through the same format throughout the experience. All of those are really helpful tips to ensure that you have a really strong document. And finally, for more information, please don't hesitate to make an appointment with us on Handshake. We're here to help you. We're here to ensure that your experiences are articulated in as strong as way possible. And it's also an opportunity for you to really get to know our office and see how we can really help you. Again, we definitely encourage you to also follow us on Insomnian Career, our Instagram, and to be on the lookout for our Career Chronicle. Thanks so much for joining us today. Bye-bye.